Greetings. It's been a while, hasn't it? Today I played a game called Karate Master 2 Knockdown Blow, also known as Karate Master 2 Knockdown Blow with a Japanese accent. Where's the Dragon Ball Xenoverse review, you ask? Uh, well, you see, the first thing I noticed about Karate Master 2 was it being locked 50 frames per second. Not really a huge problem, but a bizarre choice to say the least. I assume this game was made with PAL's 50Hz displays in mind, or something. The options menu has the full screen and windowed modes inverted for some reason. No resolution options, and yeah, it's pretty bare bones. The game's aesthetic and the real-time body damage seems to be a bit of a play on SNK's Art of Fighting series. They even had the bonus training stages. Karate Master 2 has no high jumping, heat blasting kind of stuff seen in most other fighters, and it's strictly focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat instead. You build your stats by participating in tournaments and training, and you'll need to earn money Shenmue style with a soul-crushing forklift operator day job. Actually, that looks pretty relaxing. That pay isn't bad either. $24 for a minute of work? You have the best job in the world, why are you even doing karate, you ungrateful fuck? The game is clearly made with a lot of passion for karate, with the game's introduction screen dedicating the title to all practitioners and teachers around the world. Oh, that's kinda nice. It actually warms my heart. That said, passion does not equate to polish. There's numerous spelling and grammatical errors which I really wish weren't present. A typo here and there is acceptable, sure, but spelling strength like this is not. The controls can be a little difficult to get the hang of, and the game will assume you're playing with a controller, which I definitely recommend, by the way. Many of the commands require pressing two buttons in a direction at the same time, which can be a little awkward to say the least. Most of the time I ended up just mashing quick punches and kicking the opponent's head from a distance. Seem to work fine. One thing that I really do like about this game though, is how you and your opponent can sustain internal damage such as liver shock or broken bones. I was sent to the hospital after a very unlucky hit managed to shatter my ribcage. I was out in just a couple days, but still, it's a nice touch that a lot of fighting games don't take into account. It really does make me appreciate my physically non-demanding lifestyle. The game can be frustrating in how little it explains itself, such as with your day job in the forklift. Also, I'm somewhat of an anime nerd, weeb, dreamcast owner, whatever you call those kind of people. But what's Tai Kitai? What's Kihon? What's Kumite and Waza? What's strategy? Most people aren't going to know what any of that is. Some of it can be explained by moving the mouse over them, but a glossary, an introduction that explains what all of these things are, or maybe just an option to translate these to their English equivalents would have been appreciated. I'm all for learning new things, but simply throwing unfamiliar terms at someone without context is just going to confuse them. The game is quite a grind to it, and you'll probably get a little tired of having to do the challenge-free dock job for more tournament money which only serves to extend the game time, nothing more. The concept of a karate life sim is really cool to me, especially with the risks of horrific injuries that come with any martial art, but this game is very rough around the edges. Most notably, the game is just unstable. The crashes are very frequent and it's been a real nightmare trying to make this video. AVGN Adventures, much as I disliked it personally, at least worked. I never had that game crash a single time and things always functioned as intended. Karate Master 2, on the other hand, is a gamble as to whether the program is going to stay running or not. I've gotten another glitch where the tournament result screen will simply freeze over top of the fight itself. The fight will go on as usual, but you can't see what you're doing. When this happens, I've found that spamming the X button for repeated light punches allows me to win 9 times out of 10 though. So it's an inconvenience you can work around, but you have to ask yourself, why? Why would you want to do that? In what world is this acceptable? You eventually fight more than just other karate users though, branching off to fight a boxer, a wrestler, and even a Muay Thai champion. Probably pronouncing that wrong. The game is light both in tone and story up until the Budokan, where more cutscenes start to take place. Having to defeat Matsu's best student Jiro at the Budokan, with not one curse word seen the entire game, we're treated to this. If that wasn't enough, with Matsu already looking suspiciously like a grappler Baki character, we see not Yujiro show up. Almost immediately after defeating Matsu, 
you return to your gym to find your girlfriend has been kidnapped. In the next scene, with the dialogue as it always has been, it seems like we're back to nonsensical, light-hearted stuff until... Oh, no, 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 no. You know, some people gave Freedom Planet flack for having an inconsistent tone. But in that game, the dark side of the story had been established already, right in the opening cutscene. And the bright, happy nature of that world helped to contrast things. It was pretty well balanced, to be honest. Here, after a happy-go-lucky, relatively consequence-free romp of karate adventures, hours in and seemingly near the end, a character we just met two scenes ago is now threatening to rape our girlfriend. Gee, that's f just that's just wonderful. A plus plus. Fuck. Fuck everything. Just f weird, uncomfortable tone shifts aside. The idea behind Karate Master 2 is really neat, and the sprites on the characters themselves are pretty good. Seeing your character get more roughed up the more you're hit, risking injury, and targeting specific body parts to make your opponent fall faster is a cool premise, in theory. What it really boils down to though is being able to tap that quick jab repeatedly and win in under 10 hits after you're sufficiently leveled up. Even the fight against Oboro, the one with that uncomfortable little bit of dialogue and implications, ended very quickly. What exactly would have happened if I lost that fight? Uh, I, I don't really want to find out. I'm gonna be honest, I really, I really don't. The injury system, while an interesting idea, becomes a liability. It seems completely random and sometimes it can just happen the first time your opponent hits you. The novelty wears off quick and you're just praying to the RNG gods and the stability gods that the game doesn't either send you to the hospital or crash outright. There seems to be a bunch of people out there who aren't having the crashes or screen freezing bugs that I've been seeing. It may just be my particular setup for all I know, but you know what? That's not my problem. I've never played another game in recent memory, indie or not, that's actually been this broken. So I have little reason to point the blame to anyone but the devs themselves. I wanted to like this game, and with the crashes solved I probably would find it to be a fun, if flawed, piece of indie intrigue. That still doesn't really make it a good game though. Karate Master 2 may not have necessarily lived up to the potential it had, but here's hoping that it'll give Cryonsoft or someone else a framework for a future karate life sim of my dreams. Wait a second. That dev name is really familiar. I could swear I've seen it somewhere before. Wait a sec, didn't they also make- <laughs> Yeah, that suddenly makes a lot more sense. <laughs> 